Okay, so before we get into the video, I just want to announce what's happened with the custom items tutorial, which is about this hat as well. It's a custom items, but currently a lot of item components are broken, so custom pickaxes don't work, for example. So over here, I'll just show you. I'm in survival. As you can tell, I have a pickaxe, and I have armor, and a hat. If I try and mine this block, it takes forever. So currently, the component that was used to make blocks diggable faster with custom tools is broken. So I'm actually going to hold back on releasing the custom tutorial, the items tutorial, until this bug is fixed. But there's also durability is broken. So armor also breaks in one hit. So until those are fixed, I'm not going to release the tutorial. I did already record it all though, but I've decided to wait it out until the issues are resolved. Back to the video. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Machine Builder, and today I have an infinite generation method to show you. Basically, this is a thing I made with some command blocks that can generate infinite rooms around the player. So it's like how Minecraft generates infinite worlds. This can basically generate tile sets of dungeons. You can have a dungeon that just goes on forever. So I'm just going to showcase this. So first we can click this button to spawn an armor stand will then fall down here onto the grass. It's called Gen. This is useful. So it's got a custom name. And then over here we can run the generation. So it's just one function over here, which is called once per tick when this switch is on. And that function is just these commands all lined out just into one file instead. And I'll just run this so you can see what's happening. So you can see armor stands are being spawned around the original armor stand and it's creating tiles of wooden planks around me. So as you can see everywhere around me is just being surrounded in planks. And so that's basically the way the generation works. And you can make these tiles a lot bigger so you can have like 10 by 10 tiles or 30 by 30 tiles if you want larger tiles. So this is just an example of 2x2, two because two, as you can see, 2x2. Two two. Also, I hope you like the top hat I'm wearing. But over here, that's how you do it. That's the system, so that's tiles like that. And this is very slow though, so I'm going to turn that off, and I'm going to clear everything. There you go. And I'm going to click this button to spawn another one in, and then use the function instead. And as you can tell, it's much, much faster. So already we have so many more. You can tell there's already just a big circle around me. And as I run, they generate in front of me and around me. And if I stop, they'll start expanding outwards in every direction around the player. So I'll turn this off and then clear all of them. There we go. And this is very useful for, well, as I said, custom dungeons, which are infinite and just keep expanding out forever. So I'll show you another world I made, uh, which is actually just copying Phoenix's, Phoenix SC, his ID. He made the back rooms in Minecraft. So I copied that. So I'll open up that world. And then, yep, I'll come right back once the world's open. Okay, so here we are. We are in the back rooms world that I made. And over here you can see some of the tile sets that I built. So there's just a few little different variations. So that you can obviously tell it's random. And I actually put them all into structures now instead. Before this I was using these armor stands to clone the areas, but that was very slow. So I turned it all into one function over here. And this is actually well, originally it was a lot more command blocks, it was like this whole area of just commands and repeated some things. But now it's a lot smaller, so that's a lot better. You can also do times 2. Oh, it's 2x. It's 2. There we go. So now that executes the main loop twice every tick. So if I go out somewhere very far, where there aren't rooms yet, we'll first actually show you. If I go down into here, 
these are rooms and they just expand out forever okay so I'm still flying out and as you can tell I'm nowhere near the edge yet there are some bats over here each of these rooms is just a random rotation and a random variation of the rooms that I built so I think I'm almost reaching the edge or it's expanding too far now it's too fast yeah there it is can't get anywhere because it's just expanding in front of me there are armor stands at every single entrance which spawn a new room at the new coordinates you might be able to catch a glimpse of the armor stands as I'm flying I don't know what happened there, that was weird. But as you can tell, the rooms are being generated all around me. There are some more rooms over here. So there is no escape from these rooms. You can't get out of them. Even if I sprint fly in creative mode, I'm just going straight here. And they're always going to generate faster than I can fly. As you can tell, they're managing to stay away. Even with speed 255, it's very hard to escape the generation because it always just surrounds you again. But as you can tell, that's basically the generation of this system. So it's really very effective. And I'll go through what it's doing now. So I'll go into the other world to show you how it works. Okay, so we're back in this world, and I'm going to show you how this system works. So I'm just going to add some repeat delay so that you'll be able to tell what's actually happening. There we go, I can turn that on now. I'll add some more delay. Okay. So now if I press this button, armor stand falls. And what this armor stand does, I might actually just turn this off so it's easier to talk about. So step one, the commands get the nearest armor stand towards the player, so that would be this one, and then it tags it, so it just does tag at e type equals armor stand, count equals one, add, and then tags it with selected, and then if an armor stand is selected, it'll check four directions out, so it will check over here, one, two, three, four, it'll check these four blocks, and if they have grass on them, it will then spawn another armor stand with the name gen. So over here, if it had grass here, it would spawn one here. And then one tick later, it will set a block of stone underneath that armor stand. So now we have another armor stand. If I just grab out one, it would spawn like this. If there is a grass block here, so it wouldn't spawn one here because there's planks here. So it would ignore that one. But it would spawn three more around it. And then it would select the current one that's selected and fill the area underneath it with planks and it's still here by the way, it just fills that area and then it will test for any armor stands with planks under them and remove them and then that's the next stage of spreading so that's how the spreading algorithm works and if I turn this back on, you can tell it spreads once and then we'll fill it with planks and then kill it. So you can see one's armor stand set stone, fills the original one with planks and then kills it. So there we go. And if you put that all into a function instead of these commands, it's much faster. So here you can tell they just expand outwards from the player. Because it's always getting the next closest armor stand, which is always changing because they're all moving further away. 
and that way you can generate tiles. So you can have a custom structure that you want and you can randomize the structure. So you can have different dungeon tiles randomized. But as you can tell, this just it's like a flood fill algorithm. So it just will keep expanding outwards until it reaches the chunk, the loaded chunk borders. That's basically the whole video. So thanks for watching. If you liked it, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to see more content, obviously hit the bell icon because then you'll get notified when I upload new videos. And also, apparently there's a YouTube bug going around where people unsubscribe. So if you were subbed, check that you still are because it might have unsubbed you. But anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.